Hello and welcome to the Deep 2 NBA podcast. I'm Alessio Conte, your favorite podcast co-host, favorite podcast co-host. And joining me today is the one and only Sean Carroll of the Deep 2 fame. How are you, Sean? Ah, oh, good in yourself, mate. Yeah. I don't know. Happy to be here, I guess. God. Oh, that's that's not good. You just you just decorated a Christmas tree. It's it's Wednesday. Why are you, why are you eh? Um, I think I'm just tired, but mm. uh own fault. So I guess I can't really like a coworker told me today. Uh, you're the one that picked up those shifts, mate. So when you complain about it, can't really feel sorry for you. I thought, you know what? Fair enough. Mm. Well, then, if that's if that's the way we're going about things, then no one should ever be allowed to complain about doing things, even though all of us do things. Well, funnily enough, that's so what have, what a, have a complain, mate. <laughs> that's what I said. Have a, have I said yeah, I picked up the shifts, but like I can still <laughs> be upset that I'm working. <laughs> Work yeah, still you, sucks. You do it. You're doing the shifts. That's part of picking them up. You yeah. got to do them, and it's like, oh fuck, we're going to do them. <laughs> oh, um, well, this 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 is the first chef bowl, um, and we say chef bowl because we've got uh, one and three in the the deep two expanded universe um, chefs. Myself being the best chef of the podcast network, yourself being third. Um, Marco coming in as a close second there. Um, yeah, we 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 skipped you last week because uh, we hadn't worked out a schedule. But this is the first time you and I are doing a doing a pod together. How, how are you feeling? Uh, on the extended universe, because we had that one when I got back from New York, where it was the two of oh, us, yeah, and I was yeah, making, I yeah. can't remember, I was making tacos, the mango, with the mango That's sauce. That's right. Yeah, that was a good pod. Yeah, pretty good <laughs> for, a, for a third-ranked chef, I would say. Have you been, um, Everything. have you cooked cool. anything up recently, Shawnee? Yeah, I made, um, that's a great question. I don't know how you need to segue this into it perfectly, but um, I actually cooked myself a white chicken chili. Um, I don't know if Maddie Matheson invented it, but Maddie Matheson was the guy who brought it to my attention, not personally. I wish I knew him. Um, I'm watching The Bear at the moment, actually, and he's in that, and he is equally as funny as he is on YouTube. But, um, yeah, I made a white chicken chili. Have you heard of it before I sent you a message last week? Uh, no, no. I've only ever seen it with like beef or I did one with kangaroo once. Yeah. How was that? Uh, went hard with the oil to make up for the lack of fat in the mince and mm. it, was quite, it was quite good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's always a good thing, but white chicken chili, um, you make a, not a miracle, it's the other word that starts with S, but you make one of them. With, um, yeah. Sofrito. <laughs> Um, jalapenos slash jalapenos, um, uh, white onion and celery. Blend that up, start frying it, and then chuck in like you, you crisp up your chicken, throw in your chicken, and then chicken stock, and then just let that cook down. And then it's like all up to like, you know, whatever the hell you want. So I threw a bit of cabbage in there, and then on top, you go with a little bit of radish, a little bit of um, avocado, a little bit of sour cream. And a little, I know. Obviously, you're throwing all your Mexican spices with your sofrito. Um, it was quite good, but I was, um, I, I didn't have access to fresh jalapenos. Also, I went by your trick. Instead of getting the poblano chili, which we can't, I did use a uh, a green capsicum, which like I don't know if I could have tasted the difference, but that's right. Next time, I'll just use more jalapenos. Um, um, but poblanos are really mild. Oh, okay, okay, cool, cool. But instead of, um, yeah, as, as I was cooking it, like I'm, I'm cooking it up and then it's like, all right, time to throw in the knock-knock cumin, a little, um, little bit of paprika of the smoked variant, right? And then I'm like, ah, fuck, jalapenos aren't really hot and I'm missing out on that chili. So let's, let's throw in a bunch of chili powder. And then long story short, it was really, really fucking hot. It was like the sort of dish you eat with the sour cream next to you because you need to keep topping it up every single time you finished it. Um, so I can't wait to do it again. But I, I reckon you should do it. It was good. It was fun. I just remember when you sent me the recipe and you were like, hey, um, I know you bought those Mexican chilies online. Can you like send me that website? And then I looked at the recipe and I was like, Sean, the only Mexican chili here is a jalapeno. <laughs> No, what's Poblano? <laughs> oh, I'm just just yanking your chain, mate. It would have been funnier if we were sitting face to face and not over a bloody phone call. Where are you? Where are you uh, calling from, mate? It sounds like the middle of the Bermuda <laughs> Triangle. Yeah, I just I just thought I was done there. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing podcast. 
No, I'm in the um, beautiful part of the world called Creswick, mate, just about half an hour out of uh, Ballarat, or 20 minutes if you know how to put your foot down. Um, but anyway, that's, that's neither here nor there. Before we move on to the topic of the pod, what's the challenge? You, you've written down <laughs> Alessa's challenge to Sean. I have been, I've been lining this one up for two weeks since you initially asked me to come on the podcast. Um, I, I, I didn't know how to name it, but I think the listeners will or at least avid fans will get it as soon as I say it. Um, I want to call it the don't talk about the Warriors for five fucking minutes challenge. <laughs> you do this, um, and you're like, look, Sean, we love you. We, we at the deep deep podcast and like, value your work. But sometimes when I listen to the podcast, I'm like, wow, he actually can't go longer than four minutes and 59 seconds without just mentioning them in passing. <laughs> I'm envisioning today's conversation and we're talking about the Sacramento Kings and you ask me like, how do you, you know, how do you feel Keegan Murray's going? And I'd be like, oh, I think he's doing pretty well. Like he's got a decent trajectory. And then your response to my, to that prompt or, to, you know, to my response to your prompt would be like, yeah, I remember when Harrison Barnes was a rookie, but about it, but it, but it's like, <laughs> Need it. We need some new anecdotes, Sean. You just got to be <laughs> like any other team. Yeah, I thought that might be the case, but it does suck that the Kings, who we're going to talk about, the Kings just played the Warriors in like a pretty pretty standout game by the Sacramento Kings. But I've just done it, haven't I? I've just talked about the Warriors. But so the challenge is to go like as long as I can in this podcast without mentioning the team in blue and gold. I I would to, I want to see if you can do the whole episode. <laughs> The Kings are such a, such a strong facsimile for the Warriors. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is. It is. I think it's like nah. I think I think it's just interesting when it does it when it comes up like out of place. You know, like if you're talking mm-hmm. about the Kings' most recent game against the Warriors, that makes sense. But it's when mm-hmm. you start to go on tangents, like yeah, I remember when when they were building the roster in 2016, blah blah blah. It's like what, mm-hmm. what are we talking about? <laughs> so. That's my challenge, bro. Too. I asked you how dinner was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, anyway, yeah. if you're okay. willing to accept, we'll see how long you can last. Yeah, no, I'm I'm willing to accept. Let's see how long I last. But um, all right. What what we're going to talk about today is the Sacramento Kings, your favorite team. Um, for I think it's nearly been twelve months now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you were going for Indiana for quite a while there. Oh um, God, would it be nice just to jump on a winning team, but the last year we are. Um, we're going to talk about Sacramento Kings, just sort of a check in how they're going. This is their second year of actual sustained success. So, you know, if, you, if your heart wasn't beating fast last year, like we really needed to check in you now. Um, before we get into the, before we get into like the, the final topics, I'll start off with the particulars. Um, they're currently sitting at a 11 and 8 record after yesterday's loss to the New Orleans Pelicans in the, look, that's actually, well, I've got to tip my hat to you. This is the furthest the Kings have ever gone in the in-season tournament. So like there's, there's at least some signs of growth here as well, um, making it to the quarterfinals. But the Kings are 11 and 8. You've actually got a negative point differential, which yeah, still small sample size. Let's not be too frightened by that. Um, you're currently 12th in offense with just above average 115.4 points per 100 possessions. You're 20th in defense. Um, and over the past two weeks, you're looking very similar. I will filter these stats. Ah, oh, it's not going to work. Oh, now I'm loading. Talk amongst yourselves. Look, I think in a 19 game sample where Fox has missed a few games, like it's fine. But I had a mm. conversation with a co-worker um, at my secondary job. Um, the listener can figure out which one that is. Um, and he was like, bro, what happened today? What happened to the Kings? And I was like, oh, you mean like the game that we lost to the Pelicans? He's like, yeah, what the fuck? Mm. You, can't, you can't be losing those ones. It's like we made, like we accidentally finished in the third seed last year. And then like mm. we lost the we lost basically a regular season game today. Um, yeah. You know, like, I'm supposed to be like, what the fuck's happening? We should have won that, blah, blah, blah. It's like the Pelicans are probably better than us. I don't know. I don't know what his point uh, was. No, like I I, I think your co-workers like got, got a bit of a point. Like I think you're better than the Pelicans. I think your ceiling might even be better than the Pelicans right now. But Fox is just like, yeah, he's, he's playing at an all NBA level, but, you know, you mentioned it. Like he, he used, he was injured so recently, and he just came back from an injury. And there were rumors that he's actually like rushing back from the injury because of the new, 
65 game rule for all NBA all NBA um, eligibility, which means that he would obviously uh, check into that you know, designated veteran extension eligibility. So I think there's like a little bit of Fox rushing back a little bit too fast. And as soon as he came back, I put him on my fantasy team. As soon as he came back, I was like, oh, this is going to be a rough start. It was actually fine. And then now the past two games has been a bit like, oh, maybe rushing back from an injury and sort of just going off adrenaline hasn't really worked. And like there was a couple of moments in that game against the Pels where he just like he would fake out his defender, the defender would jump, and then it's like, oh, sweet, a wide open layup or like a very short mid-range shot. And he just like short armed it and missed it and then committed some frustration fails. So I I think you uh, I'm actually kind of surprised to hear you say that Tico was saying, oh, like the, the Pelicans are better. I think you're a legitimate top six seed in the West. And I think that's, you know, quite quite incredible that you've got there. But I, I'm only saying that after this after this 19 game sample size this season. Like I, I think seeing it for the start of this year has actually made me believe it more. Do you agree? I don't disagree. I just meant like he reacted so um not viciously. But he like mm. he reacted to a to like a loss to the Pelicans in the in season tournament quarterfinal like as if I give a shit like I'm just, <laughs> like, like who cares I don't know like I can't it was very like I can't believe you guys lost today like what the hell what do you, uh, what do you make of that and I'm like nothing we lost a game to a good basketball team like do you expect us to win uh, like a regular season game yeah you're not playing yeah. 45 minutes to all your starters and yeah, stuff. like what like what are we talking about and you know. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know. It's, I think in general, I think in general, it's nice um, being able to tune into a game and think at any given point. And it was the same last year. Like, oh, we can actually win this. And that's nice. That's a really mm-hmm. nice feeling. Because mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. it's, yeah, in 12 years of, or 13 years now, to only have that for one and a half years of the 13 is pretty rough. <laughs> so where do you want to start with this team? What's, um, what, what, what part of the roster do you want to start off with? Um, it makes me nervy. You know, we mentioned Fox's definite All NBA bid from the first twenty games. Like he's the he's mm-hmm. in the top fifteen, no questions asked. Um, I think you might have even noted MVP voting, like potential up the top there. The um, commentators that last game said he's in the top five, but then I sort of noted it out in my head, which is a crazy thought to actually think. It is a crazy image to think about. Um, uh, yeah, he's he's definitely in all NBA. I don't think he's in MVP, but keep going. Yeah, yeah. And like these MVP votes, whenever it's like that guy's in the MVP conversation, it's like there are only ever two people in the MVP conversation. The rest of them are just ancillary. Yeah. Um, but it is frightening when he goes down. It does feel like there's just nothing left. Mm. Um, but when he's there, it feels like everything comes together. And, like, you could say that about any superstar on any roster, but to a certain yeah. extent, like, the really, really good teams can lose their number one and win games, right? And it just mm-hmm. feels like we can't do that. And I don't know what the numbers are on that. I'm just going eye test. I don't know, like, if he went down and we were 500 and that's fine. Or um, mm-hmm. it just it just looked gross. And then on top of that, like, this Sabonis run's excellent, but... Whenever someone says like, "Oh my God, look at this Sabonis and Fox thing," blah blah blah, you'd be surprised how many conversations I'm having about the Kings. Funnily enough, like every person <laughs> in my life knows that I'm the only Kings fan, so that's the only thing they bring up with me. <laughs> it's like I'm the Kings guy, and like you know, I have a personality and like a life, right? <laughs> um, but it, my response is always like, "Yeah, it's good. I just gotta wait for the playoffs, though. Mm. Just gonna wait for the playoffs, though." Yeah, yeah, and th- and that was the thing in the playoffs last year against nondescript team B. Um, you just like it's as soon as the defense really starts to hone in on Fox and like there's a little bit of that and there's a little bit of like what's his what's his team look like without Fox, but as soon as the team starts to to hone in on him and it's like oh okay well you know our our plan A has been locked down by you know a great defender let's go to plan B and it's the bonus just like short arming mid range jumpers and then just getting in his head and not wanting to take him. It's bonus excellent regular season player and I think he's going to be an excellent regular season player for Czech's age 27 he's probably going to be an excellent regular season player for like the next five at least years yeah easy fun. but yeah um 
Yeah, I guess that's a bit of a philosophical difference as well. Like you, you haven't had much success at all in the whole time you've been like a fan of this team. So it's like, I guess it doesn't really matter. Yeah, check in when the playoffs come and Sabonis is probably going to lay an egg again. And maybe if you get, if the if the seedings break right, maybe you're going to play against like an inexperienced team. If let's say you're the three seed, you're not going to get, um, you know, a team like you did last year. <laughs> um, maybe you do, you know, maybe you do become a second round team. But I, I completely agree with it. It's like check in and Sabonis in the playoffs. And I don't think that's ever going to be any different because, for him to get over the hump and be like a, a really great second option and a great you know regular season player, he has to take a leap like Jokic, which is like either outscore the crap out of the guys so much that your defense doesn't matter, or actually get better on defense, which is like you know something that we haven't seen. And I don't think we are going to see. No, um, and the worst part is Jokic is better at both of those things, like way better. Yeah, no, we're talking yeah. about the best basketball player in the world, but like yeah. that's that that is unfortunately what you need, like. Yeah, Giannis cannot shoot a basketball, but he's so fucking good at everything else. And yeah. Jokic is good at literally everything. Like I don't think there's anything he's bad at, except like what potentially weak side blocking when he has to like <laughs> sprint across the floor. Like a situation he's never mm. in. Um, mm, mm. And Bone is not doing either of those. It's just like not. It will not happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And there's um, or you're artificially capped. Um, at whatever yeah. Fox, whatever Fox can do, but that's that's okay, isn't it? It is. Um, it is short term. It is short term. But you know, mm. can you envision another season or two where you're just like, here we go again, like Fox, Sabonis, Murray, Monk, plus mm. ancillary pieces. You know, if three, four, five, six seed. You know, is there a play in run there somewhere? And like first or second round knockout again and again. And, like, you know, we're talking mm. about a team that's never made the playoffs twice in a row, so like a better, let alone, like, once. Um, and yeah. When, um, and, and I'm pushing forward and see, foreseeing all these playoff um, entrances. But, like, you can – I think, like, anyone can envision a world where that just keeps happening over and over, and at what point do they go, like, God, this guy really just, like, has nothing in a, in a game that matters. Yeah. Yeah, but – I guess, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you've got really high expectations, and that's fine. But it is like sort of just maybe, maybe get to the playoffs for a couple of years in a row, and then really start worrying about maybe the matchups. And it's like, okay, well, maybe Kevin Hurd is not the right guy because you need like a more defensive-minded player there, and then maybe Harrison Barnes is going to be too old, and then you're like, oh, well, how good can Keegan Murray be? Um, yeah, which is I think which is like- kind of kind of grim. Yeah, and the only way out of it, well, not the only way, like obviously there's a bunch of stuff that can happen and sports are so weird and and wacky and wonderful to use my power of three. Um, But like Keegan Murray has to become the second best player and he needs to become like real. Mm. He has to be real. Mm -hmm. Which like he seems like he has the demeanor and I think the most likable thing about Keegan Murray is that he's a robot, um, which which is really cool. It's really cool to see someone who just isn't so overconfident and like American um, mm. from an American mm. player. Like, I think it's really refreshing. Um, but at the same time, it's like, where does this guy's ceiling land, basically? Like, where's the cap? Um, yeah. Because yeah, you, need, and, you, need it to, I, you need it to be basically an all-star. Yeah, I thought it was below All Star before this season, but he has like he has improved a lot. And I'll, I'll get Jamie to pull up his numbers at the moment. <laughs> Keegan Murray in fifteen games this year was averaging twelve point nine points, uh, six six rebounds, two assists, shooting thirty one percent from three and thirty nine percent from the floor. That's actually not that's completely different to the eye test. I thought he was doing a much better job. He's dealt with a tiny bit of injuries. But yeah, you yeah. sort of you sort of need you need someone to come in and be a better second option next to Fox if you really want to make noise in the playoffs. And you're not going to do that in free agency. And like, yeah, you've got all your future picks like moving forwards. It's like, yeah, you, you could you could be the next team to like put in some big trade and maybe it's like, you know, when, when Donovan Mitchell is eventually pissed off, which seems to be like the rumor that's like slowly growing, or maybe it's Joel and or, or whoever it is, maybe that's how you do it. But I think just, you know, <laughs> Not putting the cart before the horse. Like I think it's pretty fine right now, where you're just sitting around. Fox wants to stay. Fox is gonna stay. Like 
you know, whether you, whether he makes all NBA or not, like it's he's probably going to sign an extension. Like he's just got can he's going to make a lot of money and he's just going to be playing and he's going to be scoring twenty five points points a game. So bonus is only twenty seven. Like let's say you get minimum three more All Star level years out of him. Like there's there's definitely like a, in in the in the future, not just like short term future. Like there's winning seasons ahead, and that's at least a good base for a team that's been dog shit for so long. Yeah. That's at least a good base to be like, okay, cool. Well, now we're consistently a playoff team. How do we take that next leap? Um, and there are zero bad vibes. Like, I don't think, I can't think of a, a bad vibe from, well, this season, right? Like, mm, like mm. Fox's injury is just an injury. Sabonis had a couple of rough games because Fox was out. But other than that, and like Keegan's started slow, but we're still over 500 despite mm. this sort of like weird average start. And also like the, you know, we were saying before the season started, like everyone else is going to get better. Like the Kings didn't finish the third seed last year because they were the third best teams because everyone else played like shit. Um, mm. and now those teams are after a quarter of the season performing better. And all of a sudden you're in a bit of a battle on the table, um, which mm. last year they didn't have to compete with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But not, not to discredit it like, you know, you're a little bit of a fake top four seed, but I think you were comfortably a top six seed, right? Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. And I think you're you're definitely a favourite in our eyes to be a, a top six seed again. Um, but it is interesting to see uh, Monty McNair and his fountain that I've been drinking from for so long sort of make the first real sort of rumour slash decision slash like acknowledgement that they're hoping to improve I think it was a, maybe a week or two ago that they said that they were interested in someone like Pascal Siakam and they're interested in potentially moving some of their picks and moving some of their core pieces to, to upgrade the roster. Um, what are your thoughts on, you know, potentially going in for Pascal Siakam or what if it is, you know, just a move to, to upgrade on the perimeter um, or around the edges of the roster, like an Alex Cruz or just like a, a minor upgrade? What are your thoughts on that? Am I crazy to hate the Siakam thing? Yeah, I, just, I, I mean, just like don't, I don't think it fits, and I don't know if that's because he's been like averageish in Toronto and needs something new and fresh. But like, like I guess he just slots in for Barnes, and then he's a way better Barnes. But then he also yeah, but he, he might t- he might not be because Harry Harry Barnes is happy just catching and shooting, and then just like doing absolutely nothing well, for that, the rest of the game of playing defense. That's what I was about to say. It's just like, but he doesn't mm. fit. Barnes fits, he'd park him in the corner. If he has to dribble like he will. Um, mm. And therefore it flows with Herder and Monk and Duarte and everyone else that's sort of like flying around. Um, mm. Siakam sort of like clogs that up and the last thing Fox and Sabonis needs are cloggers, really. Yeah. Whereas the, like the yeah. Caruso thing's interesting, but I think it's interesting short term. I don't think it's in, I think it's interesting like, a couple of wins this year, but I don't think it's anything like Caruso needs to be on a um, championship team. I, I think like on any other, yeah. it's just sort of like, yeah, they short up their bench and they get a great 30 minutes. If you need him, you know, 20, if you don't um, mm. defend the best guard on the other team, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, he, he needs to be playing for a, Bucks, for example. Yeah. Yeah. A serious, serious team and not like a, Let's try to win a playoff series team. I hope because the, the bidding war for Alex Caruso is going to get quite hot and there's going to be teams like you guys who might have the best offer for Alex Caruso, but then there'll be teams like Boston who won't, but might be like one of the best fits of all time, like just to get this like, you know, hard-nosed defender who just like never makes a wrong decision. Um, it'll just be Derek White too. I really hope he ends up on a team that has like very serious championship aspirations. You're completely right with that. Um, um, but are there from, any other? Apart from any... the fact, sorry, but apart from the fact that it would just be incredible to see a white man with a buzz cut play for the racist Celtics, um, <laughs> the basketball fits good too. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, put him there or Utah. But are there any other dudes who you like you're thinking about for a trade? Um, I well, on the Siakam thing, I guess I don't technically hate the Ananobi move that this this dreaded Ananobi move dreaded for the Raptors that they've been sitting on for what two and a half years now yeah. um i think he's coming out of contracts like am i upset if it's a murray for ananobi vibe assuming that you get verbal um a verbal agreement yeah. with ananobi to stay on and then it's like 
you know, we don't know what Keegan Murray's ceiling is going to be. We do know what Ananobi's is, but Ananobi's better now. And you know he's a third piece. Although, you know, so I think, and I think we had this discussion privately, you know, if I was thinking about a bloke, he would be a bloke on that list. But push comes to shove, I'm still keeping Murray. And I don't know if that's just like Mm. silly Homer, we drafted him, he's our guy. And I'm and I'm like missing the, you know, NBA players never actually get that much better, and we've got this guy, and we we can trade for a guy that is better, um, but mm. like is better short term, and like Ananobi's probably not growing anymore in his career, no. not growing as a player, not yeah. as a height, um, <laughs> but like Murray could, and because we need Murray too, there's no point giving him up. Yeah. Yeah, and like with with Keegan Murray, you've got him for like a minimum of seven years. But if you get OG Ananobi, then it's like, okay, we're well, going to re-sign him after this, maybe four years or five years, and like by that time, he's going to be thirty-three or whatever it is. Um, I, I I always think about that argument because the I feel like the more I think about it, the more I'm like, well, teams never last that long anyway. Like this whole like yeah, you've got them cost controlled for nine years, and then Sabonis is going to be thirty three. Mm. Fo- like Fox can turn around tomorrow and be like, "Fuck this, see you later." So I'm yeah, not yeah. too fussed about the like cost controlled Keegan for eight or expensive and another but- four because at the end of the day, I would argue more times than less, mm. you know, four to five years is probably what that cycle looks like before there's a major shift. And- but cost controlled also means that like. If you do go in a different direction, or Fox does just turn around and say, "I don't want to be here," cost controlled means that um, you've got Keegan Murray who would have three more years left in his deal, and then you can look at trading him. So it doesn't just mean like, yeah. "Okay, well, you, you've got a window of being good for seven years." It means like, "Okay, well, you've got if you do decide to blow it up, you've got optionality where it's like, okay, maybe he's going to be our number one option for sixty-five games or something, or maybe you're just going to turn around and trade him and like quickly, you know, dump dump everything so you can tank, as opposed to just letting the guy walk and then you start a new tank. I guess I just find it hard to believe that the Kings are more happy to look for a foundation that will win them a certain amount of games or give them a certain amount of flexibility more than they're looking to uh, win games while they're hot. That's uh, be, that mm. they're hot being like four or five years. Like I wonder yeah, yeah. if, like I'm sure that's what Monty McNair wants. I'm not sure that's mm. what the, the the owner wants, um, mm. and therefore like rock in a hard place. You know, maybe we're just talking too much. Um, I'm actually, I'm actually interested in this, Sean. Um, mm. I think it was a ringer. I think it was a ringer podcast. I only listen to the group chat nowadays. I'm off the ringer, but every now and then before I go to sleep, I'll get fifteen the first fifteen minutes of a new group chat episode from the ringer. Um, mm. and they were discussing how. The Minnesota Timberwolves margin for error so far this season has been like razor thin. Might have been Dan Devine. Mm. I can't remember who it was. But mm. he was like, Anthony Edwards is playing out of his mind. And mm. whenever the Timberwolves play against another team, they're, the other team underperforms. And all of a sudden, the Timberwolves have come out with this 15 and four record. But like, mm. their bear sucks. And like, Towns is an idiot. And like, I would argue Ant's an idiot not necessarily mm. on the basketball court, but definitely outside of it. Um, mm. And, you know, there was, like, as since 2010, like, the Wolves and the Kings have just been absolute dumpster fires. Um, mm. And now all of a sudden, you know, you've got these two teams at the top of the, at the top of the, well, league, basically. Wolves are 15 and mm. four, top of the Western Conference, and we're fifth, but, you know, tied fifth and whatever, over 500. Mm. And mm. I just, like, feel like, we're better than them. And it's a really mm. weird, it's a really strange thing. And they're only like four games ahead. It's nothing crazy. And the, the season's so young. But like, mm. so bonus is better than Gobert. And Fox is better than Edwards. And like, Towns is a big dummy. And like, that's enough. <laughs> it's really Yeah, great. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, it's an interesting it's an interesting comparison because you do feel more sustainable. Like the fact that you've got Fox and the Ox, which is super cringe, but you've got this two man game that just does everything for those two guys. But then you've also just got very good shooters all around them. Like you said, HB will just sit in the corner and do nothing. Slash shoot. Did you see he posted that thing on Instagram? Just the did you see the photo he posted? 
I don't follow anyone on Instagram. All right. Well, neither do I, but it came up on just like a, <laughs> uh, an, an NBA meme page because it was just like a, a cool shot, let's say, from like the opponent's bench where it's like it's him, he's holding the follow through on a corner three, but the three is just way off. Like it's so clear that it's going to miss, but he posted it and was like, you know, on the grind or something like another win or, or whatever, you know, cringe NBA players do. So like you've got that and you've got Herder, Monk and Keegan Murray. It's just like elite shooters. Compared to the Wolves, where it's like, oh, Rudy Gobert was bad for two years, but now he's back to his defensive player of the year levels. Like he's in, he's in the top three for DPOY. Cat hasn't had a good season, and it's like, oh, that should probably be a big problem. And Anthony Edwards is doing the Kobe thing, where it's like, man, how does he make those shots? They're so, they're impossible, and he just like throws it up, and the shot clock's going down. And like we know that that's not sustainable. Um, even like someone like Kobe and like it wasn't that sustainable. Like after a while, like their shots do miss and you can have up years and you can have down years. Um, and they, alongside the Rockets for the first, you know, 15 games of the year, um, have been like the lucky three-point shooting defense team. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, it's it's definitely, it's definitely, you guys have much better vibes and it seems much more repeatable. Um, did you also see the fact that the Wolves this year have been on top of the West for like, you know, 12 days or something. Um, and in the whole entire Minnesota Tim Wolves franchise history, they've been on top of the West for less than 10 days in their whole franchise. I mean, like, I, I didn't see it, but I, I even if you are lying to me, I'll still tell people that stuff. <laughs> I'm not. It was like with KG and stuff, KG spent like less than a week on top of the West while he was there. Um, and now Ant Edwards has spent more than 10 days. Um, that's pretty depressing, but they deserve it. Mm, they deserve but I think it. you're right. Like you, you, you've definitely got better vibes. Are they? I mean, and I, I know we don't want to talk about, you know, we don't want to talk about the team in blue and gold. But if I'm thinking of all, all NBA idiot teams, as in like, <laughs> just the <laughs> stupidest blokes, just the worst blokes. The Timberwolves have four. You know, Edwards, uh, Kyle Anderson, Gobert Towns, right? That's what, what did, wait, what did, what did Kyle Anderson do? You, the the go bear Chinaman. the go bear punch and the like just his general he, he got he got punched. Yeah. I said what I said. <laughs> wait, so you all right, well poor so poor Kyle Anderson. That's four. I'd say he's borderline. Right. And then like three and a half. Like blue and gold. Um, would be Clay and Dre, so like obviously not even yeah. close. Then <laughs> the Hornets, Bridges, Miller, Haywood, technically. <laughs> yeah, that's three. So the the Timberwolves might be the All NBA. Well, they had Kai Jones. Yeah, had past tense. Um, yeah, I'm, you, okay, I'm flicking you, through the yeah. I'm flicking through the rest of the NBA. Like Wizards is sort of just Paul. Really, yeah. Um, yeah. Hawks is is young and Murray, but they lost Collins, and so like I'm sort of as I'm as I'm flicking through, it looks like the the Timberwolves lead the league in in idiots. That's actually crazy. In, right? in dudes that Alessio wouldn't get a beer with. Oh, really? <laughs> hey, shout out to the um, JVG tribute show for their um mm. for their rookie BRT list. I I confidently stated that the number one would be. Uh, Triple J, high mayor of the Miami Heat. Um, yeah. Just because, like, man, I just see the way those blokes throw it back. They just they just love it. It'd be, it'd be great to be a part of that. Um, I'm going to listen to that pod tonight. I just, um, I didn't really, I, I think we need to, I think we need to expand the list because it's obviously the Frenchman, the guy who rolls the dice on himself. Grady, um, Grady Richards and Triple J, right? Yeah. I think we need to explain, expand the list to the whole entire draft board. Um, I mean, I think they did. I, I think you know they went deep enough. Uh, yeah, okay. In the actual well, tier um, list, on which you will find on the Deep Two's Instagram and they're all of their socials, mm. um, it's pretty deep. I think it's a it's an S A B C F like mm-hmm. tiered list. You know, they they just sort of like wanted to ask about the S. They wanted people to vote on the S. So team, yeah. uh, team Hispanic on my end. We love, we stand. 
the the only thing I have against the graphic is no Brandon Pajemski. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so about thirty minutes into the pod, and you have <laughs> no, no, that you know what? I'll actually count that as technically a relevant comment. So we'll let it slide. <laughs> now, Sean, I yeah, we, you asked me the other day. You're like, what do you want to talk about? And yeah. initially, my thought was. Whatever you want, mate. You're the you're the you know you're the figurehead. You're the man. You are the deep two. Um, I am merely, as I said at the start, your favorite co-host, favorite co-host. But <laughs> I then flicked through the league table. I was like, do any of these teams have a storyline that's worth discussing? And I flagged a few teams, and I'm going to call this segment "Why Are They So Bad?" So I'm just going to say a team name, and then I'm going to ask you the question. And I just want you to, we can keep it short and sweet and move on to the news, you know, briefly after. Mm. But mm. I just want to hear your opinion on why these teams are so bad. Are you, are you willing to get into that? Yeah, and then you should also mention that you're going to give classical less cynicism. Yeah, yeah, of course. But, like, that, I think that's a given. Okay, okay. Okay, right, let's go cool. through the list. So the Cleveland Cavaliers, why are they so bad? I, why did you write this, man? They're not, they're not bad. They're like eleven and eight, which is the same <laughs> they're, as your. They're eleven and nine, <laughs> and they're, they're not. Their, they're, they're... their last ten games are their seven and three. <laughs> yeah, but so are, so are Man City. Like if there were draws in there. <laughs> um. All right. Well, Donnie Mitch has played fifteen. I actually, that's what I was going to say. Well, why are they so bad? Tristan Thompson has played fifteen games. Oh my god. <laughs> Um, also, Craig Porter Jr., I got into a, you know, just I'll say it back and forth, but it was completely like civil. It's like Craig Porter Jr. is the backup point guard for a team that doesn't need another guard. And all these Cavs fans on threads, that's right, I was on threads. Um, <laughs> all, these, all these Cavs fans on threads are like, man, like, welcome to the league, Craig Porter Jr. Like, you know, he's, he's here, like, we've needed this backup point guard. And I was like, do you, like, do you, do you really need a backup point guard? Because you're obviously going to stagger you two guards if JB, um, JB Bickerstaff, what's his yeah. name? James JB Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Jokes. Rubio is obviously on, on leave for mental health reasons. Ty Jerome, I think, is a good point guard, and I won't mention the team that he used to play for when I formed that opinion. Right. Um, I don't know if they need a backup point guard, but but apparently they do. So this, this two-way guy, Craig Porter Jr., um, CPJ for those who like a TLA. Um, I think he's playing too much for the movie. I, I, I don't. I don't know the answer to the question. It's, it's a thin roster. They don't have any wing size people. Why do you think they're bad? Yeah, I'm like I'm not entirely convinced they are. But then every time, every now and then, I look at their, <laughs> every now and then I look at their like it's either Gar- Garland or Mitchell missing, and like early season, and we just did, had a whole discussion with the Kings. I just sort of like I guess I wished for more, and like again, yeah, early, 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 but like um, I think I put a lot of stock in Mobley. I think Alan's doing exactly what he has to do, and I think mm. ultimately I'm really nervous about this. Like I'm nervous about Donovan Mitchell being willing to throw it all away because he doesn't want to be there. Throw it all away, like yeah, it doesn't give that power to him. I guess. Um, but I'm a little bit like, why wouldn't you want to be there? It's this this roster's like pretty like apart from being thin, it's actually pretty excellent. Like that starting yeah. is so good. Um yeah. and that, Max Struce like, played well. Max Struce is shooting 38% on seven point seven threes a game. Yeah, I just like the bad vibes coming from Mitchell turned me off a little bit, despite his play being quite good. Um yeah. and Mobley's just like not hitting his stride. And is this what year four? But- no, but but Mobley is. I think it's year three. Mobley is like he's um no, it's it's year two. He was drafted in the Chet Holmgren draft. No, he wasn't. That's a that's no. This has to be three. That's yeah. It's it's definitely three. I've just looked. It, it is. Up. It's three. It's um, three. Yeah. but but Mobley's in the defensive player of the year discussion. Like he hasn't been playing well on on offense, and he hasn't really like his whole entire career. And that yeah. that could be like we know no, he's what, a good but, defender. We know he's a good defender. No, he but, was, but now he's he was... now he's being actualized. Now it's happening. And then, like once he puts on a bit of bulk, then there's a Jared Allen trade that happens where they just move Jared Allen for like salary and maybe an asset. And all of a sudden, Evan Mobley's the only big man, the only guy who can't shoot. And I'm sticking up inverted commas. 
then if Evan Mobley's the five, he's the only big man who can't shoot, then I reckon maybe then we'll see the game open up. But I am a little bit worried now that it is year three, which we just figured out. Um, there is a little bit of OG and maybe potential there where it's like, oh, awesome defensive player. If he gets it all together on offense, then, you know, league to be warned. But OG and is just never going to figure it out. Like, we know that. And he is now just a three and D player, and he always was. Yeah. Maybe Evan Mobley is just the, the two and D player. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so let's let's go ultimately with they're not bad, but also they are question mark. No, I think I think um, I think they're okay. They're good. I, I mean, I, I'm I would confidently say that they're going to be a top six seed in the East. Okay. Yeah. Um, Is that like the the least least ballsy call you can make? <laughs> well. Yeah, who's above them? So they're better than the Magic. They're probably... No, they're not. No, they're... No. I'd say the Magic, yeah. Well, Celtics, Bucks, Magic, Sixers, Knicks, Pacers, Heat. Like, that's seven. No, well, then... The Cavs better than the Pacers. Pacers, No, the the Knicks and the Pacers aren't better than the Cavs, in my eyes. What do you think? I... Probably not. Probably not. Not on talent. Um, the Heat are an absolute toss up in the regular season. Like, who the fuck knows what's happening there? And then <laughs> Nets, Hawks, Raptors, and you filter down from there, and that's all. That's all. There's no competition. Well, Nets, Hawks, Raptors. If one of those three teams trades for the next grumpy superstar, then yeah, they're great. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's move forward. So, go Cavs! Congratulations to all the Cavs fans listening. You're welcome. Um, Atlanta Hawks. Um, Sean, why are they so bad? Um. I think their like franchise all time winning percentage is like forty nine point nine nine, and remember how after they got Quinn Snyder last season it was like win loss win loss win loss and they never mm-hmm. won or lost more than two games in a row. Um, they're doing a very similar thing this year. They're never like a game above or below like more than a game above or below five hundred. Um, I think that's just it. <laughs> Yeah, I think like if the Timberwolves are an all, all an NBA idiot team, then the Hawks are the all NBA cockhead team, um, from their standard <sighs> guard lineup. And um, that's yeah, not a fan of capital, suck. huh? They just suck so much. Like they're great about <laughs> they're they're pretty good at basketball, but just them, just the blokes, they're so shit. Um, what about <laughs> Jalen Johnson coming into his own as a great switchy defender? Yeah, well, wasn't that supposed to be the bloke from Duke? Like, um, it, it is. <laughs> no, no, no. What was the other guy's name? AJ Griffin or whatever his name was. Ah, uh, is he also from Duke? Um, he, he yeah, Jalen Duke. Johnson. Jalen Johnson plays for Duke. AJ Griffin, no, nah, no one's, no one's really tooting his trumpet. Jalen Johnson was supposed to be this good. Uh, AJ Griffin plays for Duke as well. Yeah, yeah. Jalen Johnson. Johnson also played for D-U-K-E. Um, yeah, oh. but now he's out for six weeks. Yeah, okay. That's um that's that's four Pelican weeks for those playing at home. <laughs> but I'm but I am not I'm not gonna defend um the Atlanta Hawks. I I'm happy if they just stay five hundred for the next fifty years. Yeah, that and that probably I mean, their team looks like a 500 team, right? I think that might just be the truth. Yeah, and I can't think of anything more boring than just like hearing Paul Millsap and Al Horford as he's starting front court. I, I think they're just always <laughs> going to be there. It's like, oh, hey, everyone, everyone get ready. We've got Trey Young and DeJounte Murray like taking turns at trying to make a shot. It's like, well, I just watched um, I just watched like years and years of Paul Millsap and Al Horford taking turns at trying to defend the rim. It's like, oh, I don't really care, man. There's, there's 29 other teams. Yeah, at least those. They can teams, only play one team at a time. At least those teams had that. Like every now and then, Kyle Korver would hit four threes in a row, and he'd be like, "Oh, I wonder what's going to happen next." No, at least I, 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 never, I never cared. Wow. All yeah, right, I really. Yeah. All right. So maybe they're not bad, but they are just so dead average that it seems bad or it feels bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm going to skip over the next team. I actually think I want to do them last. So, Sean, the Memphis Grizzlies, why are they so bad? Um, oh, I don't know if you saw, but their starting point guard, Demetrius Jar Morant, um, he's actually, he, he was he filmed himself 
with a with a gun in places where he shouldn't have had one. And then after getting a suspension and a warning from the league, he then proceeded to go on Instagram Live again uh, and tout said gun. And he's recently been uh, it, was, it was a court order for assaulting a seventeen year old, which um, the story that we talked about when it happened last year was when like, <laughs> like I don't know, he got really pissed off at a seventeen year old and like a pickup game, and then just started like getting angry at him. And it's like surely he's got fucking bigger problems or just don't worry about that dude um but yeah they're, they're just missing their best player and it's a bit like when That's, fox is but, out like with all due respect and i'm and i mean this in the politest way possible but that's just not true because what? this team won so many games without him last year and then this year yeah. they've completely forgotten how no, to play basketball no they also had the best like they had Tyus Jones. They had the best backup point guard that could just slot right in, and at least he's going to like you know give you nine assists and one turnover. Like they had that, and now they've got um, Marcus Smart, who I don't like. They're also missing no. Stephen Adams as a as a you know defensive presence in the five. Like they had to they had to sign Bismarck Biombo off waivers, um, and Brandon Clark, another like good bench scorer that was always just buoying their bench unit. He's out with like a torn Achilles or meniscus or whatever it is. Like yeah, a lot of things have gone wrong. Like they're they're missing their best backup. Like do you do you know who started games at point guard for them? But they they Derek Rose. No 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 no. There's, there's this dude called Jacob Gilliard. Rose is he's a twenty popped up in a couple of games too. All right, Derek Rose started two games. Jacob Gilliard started seven games. Jesus, he is a he's a five nine point guard from. Uh, He's strapped in secondary college. Um, well, he's, I think he's this a is five, like, look, my, my, Sean, my nonno used to always say, live by the Dylan Brooks, die by the Dylan Brooks. And tell you what, Memphis really lived that. Mm. You remember when he used to say that at Sunday night dinners? No, no, never. Uh, yeah, it's just they're, they're just missing so many things. And it, it's they really need, they really need jar. Yeah, it's I guess just, it's it's good it's good to have a shooter in the building. Jones to Gilliard, no Clark. Although they were missing Clark a bulk of last year too, I will note. Yeah, that's not a big yeah. of a miss. And then no Brooks. Um, but like their whole thing was that they could just plug and play anyone, and then this year it isn't working. And I just I wonder mm. if like look, I'll give you the Jones thing. That's fair enough. I do wonder if the other ones are so major, and like it does make me. Second guess my thoughts on Dylan Brooks just as a basketball player. Um, well, like he's yeah. serviceable for thirty five minutes, right? Like he just is. Unfortunately, that's that's pretty mm. much true. Um, mm. I just like they were so good at plugging and playing like anyone last year, and this year, like all of yeah. those plug and plays like suck. Also, they um they also made a decision a couple of years ago when they had role players like T. Anthony Melton, uh, someone else that I'm forgetting, um, and they decided to like push it back a little bit and say, okay, like we've we've got the good role players right now, let's make the decision to push back veterans who are going to eventually get expensive, uh, and just trade for picks. And like they drafted David Roddy and they drafted. Kenny Lofton, they drafted Jake LaRavia, and like they obviously they drafted quite highly um, Zaire Williams, and they were like, okay, well we've we've had these role we've had these veteran role players in. Now it's time to like have a look at the young players, and the young players also just haven't stepped up. Like yeah. Jake LaRavia was a first round pick, and he's like just not a basketball player. Zaire Williams, extremely raw, but it's like man, you're 22 years old now, like you you probably got to do something. Um, Mate, yeah, you know, Xavier Tillman, he's 25, but he looks 35, both in terms of looks and when he's on the court. Like, his, the the dudes that they brought in, I was like, oh, of course, you're going to re- replace T. Anthony Melton. Like, that's that's so easy to do. He's just like a great defensive dude off the bench, but they yeah, just yeah. haven't been able to do it. Do you still, um, you still think Jaron Jackson's good at basketball? Yeah, yeah. That's it's crazy. like, he's. Uh, we, don't have to, we don't have to talk about it. I just. Yes or no question, he's, and the fact that you said yes. He just can't create for himself. So it's like as soon as you take away two point guards, what's he going to do? He's a professional basketball player that doesn't know how to dribble a basketball, Sean. If that's <laughs> not enough for you, then I don't know what's enough. Anyway, a right. final Here's team, um, and potentially the one that is, I mean, I, I guess it's the most gobsmacking, but also in a really, like, 
sad world the least gobsmacking. Sean, mm. the Detroit Pistons, why are they so bad? Sounds like a retin link, like good mythical morning segment. Nerd. Fish eyes, will it milkshake? Um, yeah, they're they're just they're just a bad basketball team. But they're um, the concerning stuff is the stuff that's sort of coming out about Monty Williams too. I don't know if you were in the group chat that we're both in. I was. If you, if you heard me the past couple of years, <clears throat> just putting down Monty Williams. Um, I'm looking pretty good for those takes. I was quite early on that one. Um. Like I threw Dante a bone, I was like, Tibbs shouldn't have won coach of the year then, it should have been Monty, but then it's like, nah, Monty's just a villain. The fact that he was the owner's pick for coach, despite the GM and the president of basketball operations not wanting him, and then the owner was like, well, I'm paying him the money, so I'm going to make him the coach. And then the whole stuff with um, J- Ivy, what's his name? Jaden Ivy. Yeah. The whole stuff with Ivy, where he's just, he just never consulted him at the start of the season and never told him what his role was going to be. So then he starts the season and he's like, oh, I guess I'm coming off the bench. Like, why is that? Um, and then he's, just, he's just playing lineups with Cade and the worst player in basketball, Killian Hayes. Um, yeah, this is, uh, I don't really care if they're bad because it is fun to watch teams just like struggle for so long. Like they, you know, they haven't won a playoff game since Instagram came out. <laughs> Since 2010, they haven't won a playoff game. They made it once with the Brandon Jennings, like um, no, it was the Blake Griffin. Johnson. No, oh, it would have been that as well. Blake yeah, Griffin, yeah. and they got swept by the Bucks. Yeah, um, there was also a year where Stanley Johnson guarded uh, LeBron. It was like Andre Drummond, Greg Monroe, Stanley Johnson, and Stanley Johnson was like, "Yeah, I reckon we can make some noise against the one seeded um, Cleveland Cavaliers." And looking back, it's like, oh, that's an eight seed that would have lost in the play-in. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, what a fluke eight seed. Greg Monroe playing next to Drummond is crazy. Yeah. Um, um, why well, Why do you think the Troy Pistons are bad at basketball? Well, I mean, like, I think because all their players suck at basketball, which is, like, really. I think, yeah, Marco's always saying, I love, how, I, love how, um, I love how much you simplify things less. But, like, so Cade on the season is 22, four rebounds, seven assists, 42 from the field, 35 from three. I wonder how many of those threes are like open and therefore the percentage is better than what he might actually be as a shooter. And then and then the thing that keeps coming up um, whenever you know people do breakdowns of this Pistons roster is he's turning it over like four and a half times to his seven and a half assists. Yes, mm. all of his teammates suck. And like he's probably coached poorly, but um he was the second coming of bloody like Jesus when he was coming out <laughs> and mm. it's been interesting uh, injury aside fair enough that he was mm. in so long but like I'm, I guess I'm a little shocked that he's this he's like the most average good a player is he's yeah like good, but in like the, just the averagest way yeah, yeah. Um, I remember um, someone on someone on Twitter was just like, "Man, we're seeing the first matchup between Cade Cunningham and Jalen Green. Like, can't wait to see this battle in the future." And then I commented and was like, "Man, it's the second coming of Andrew Wiggins versus Jabari Parker." Yeah. Absolutely. And then like all these Pistons fans were like, "Fuck you, man! Like that's that's so wrong. Like Cade, Cade and Jalen's gonna be like the the big two fighting for like years and years to come." And I feel pretty good about that. They're both. Jalen sucks. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, he, you know, he can't get around defenders. <laughs> he's got, he's got <laughs> one skill, and that he's like the bounciest dude in NBA history, and he's not even bounciest, good. fastiest, and he can't jump over or around. Yeah, it's, yeah. This is this is turning into quite the cynical podcast. So I, I don't know what the the differing the differing factor is. Well, um, I think you got me on for a reason, Johnny. Yeah. Um. Do you want to take a break before we hit the news? Yeah, great idea. This episode of The Deep 2 is presented by Gelateria Bico, the official gelato of The Deep 2. Gelateria Bico, handmade gelato in the heart of Brunswick. The Jeff and Gundy Tribute Show is your fortnightly dose of the lighter side of basketball, hosted by me, Marco. And me, Lucas. We take a more laid-back approach, talking about the NBA, the WNBA, FIBA basketball, culture, whatever tickles our fancy or grinds our gears. The show is filled with great guests, classic gags, and a healthy dose of tangents in honour of the great man himself. The Jeff Van Gundy Tribute Show. 
fortnightly on the Deep 2 Podcast Network. You know, loves just talking about the league, certain things like that. Cool, and we're back. So, a little bit of news of the week. Um, we've got some Josh Giddy developments. Um, so, coming from Code Sports, which I think was part of News Corp. So, like, take this with a grain of salt. I don't think there was any actual reporting coming from it. But they say that Giddy was 19 uh, when he went into the club and met the 15-year-old who lied about her age to get into the club. Um, and yeah, that was that was one part of one of the developments. And then the second development was that the female link to Josh Giddy has hired an attorney, Gloria Allred. I don't know if that rings any bells to you. doesn't to me. Uh, and that was coming from TMZ. So sort of like some pretty fucking lowly reports here, but he's still playing basketball. Oklahoma City are still employing him and... OS. Well, I don't think we've heard your thoughts on this podcast. What do you have to say? Um, I surprisingly to listeners, uh, I'm probably going to come to this with a with a real cynic's take. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's going to get away with whatever he has to get away with. The league has absolutely no reason. Well, sorry, let me rephrase. The league has plenty of reasons to follow this up and find out whatever the truth is because they can do that if they want to. Um, But ultimately it will cost them a lot of people in a pretty major up and coming market being Australia uh, on top of, uh, like Lucas said the other day, a seven or would it be a nine figure? What's a hundred million? The nine figures? Uh, yeah, nine digits. So they, they cost themselves a nine digit player, um, in a league with a bunch of nine digit players. But you know, I, I don't know, man. Like, I just find it so hard to believe that he slept with her that night and then that was it. And all those videos that leaked of him like talking to the brother and shit were from like all you tell me this all happened on one night, like, no shot. No shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like different outfits, different, yeah, different times of day. That's it's very unbelievable that it would yeah. be like, oh, okay. Well, he just met her once at a club, yeah. and then she lied about her age, and then he happened to be know the brother's name off by heart, and yeah, it's just. Yeah, and if that's and if that's true, like, what do you even say? Is it like unlucky and move on? Unlucky, sorry. <laughs> no, seriously, is it like shouldn't have happened? Unlucky, sorry. She lied, but I should have done better, and we move on from there. And like, I guess that would be the best response, and that's like technically fine, but it's not. Uh, I don't think. I don't think it is. No. Well, yeah, okay, and then he's, but then he's like, no commenting. Now he's no commenting. Reporters and the league will shut it down, and whatever they'll get away with it, and he'll be fine, and she will get uh, dragged via social media for the rest of her life. I don't know what this attorney is about. Is the attorney mm. to protect her and Josh? Is the attorney... Who's going to even bring up, a, like, a suit? Like, no one's going to bring up a suit here. If if they're not cooperating, unless the attorney yeah. is to then make them launch something. But I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't know. I think it's just, it's just bad and it's gross and <laughs> it's like... Not that we should be comparing one to the other, like apples and oranges, but Miles Bridges can get away with whatever. Giddy will be fine. Mm, yeah, um, I think I think the the lesson to take away is if you're in a if you're in like big legal trouble, you should uh, like you'd have to recommend to be a professional sports person. Like it's it's paying off. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> um, so keep that in mind if you ever do. Uh, next piece of news coming from Shannon Strania of Fan Jewel TV, interesting, um, is that the Boston Celtics are expected to be active on the trade market, specifically to upgrade the bench. Um, they're right up into the hard cap. So uh, with the new CBA, they're not able to sign anyone in the buyout market who's getting paid more than the mid-level exception. But they do have access to a $6.2 tra- million dollar trade exception um, from one of their moves. I'm not going to track it down, just take, take my word for it. Um, so it they can trade for... Uh, what Gallinari was in the it was Gallo and Marcus Smart for the Zinger. Who knows, man? Um, no. There's also no. It's, it actually, there's probably the Grant Williams because that's Ken Simon trade. 
but they can trade for anyone on the minimum and anyone who's getting paid up to $6.2 million. That doesn't include Alex Caruso, and they're probably going to get outbid there, but I think there is, you can you can put together like three minimums to uh, and that trade exception to make Alex Caruso's number, but probably getting outbid. Um, should they make a move for Andre Drummond? DeLon Wright was a name that was written down as someone who they like. It was it was it was linked in the article that DeLon Wright might be a target. I don't know if they really want that. Um, Dorian Finney Smith, uh, TJ McConnell, and Jamon Carter. It's it's interesting upgrading the bench. I was thinking about it today while watching um, the Lakers and the Suns because it's like oh, uh, Grayson Allen's doing a great job for the Suns. Right, like he's hitting a lot of shots. He's doing everything you want. He doesn't want the ball in his hands unless he's shooting it right. And then I'm just thinking, like, how how much would a team who just needs, like, one more piece, and not, like, a, a good piece like the Kings, like, how much would a team like the Celtics who need just, like, a just a consistent bench piece, how much would you actually pay for a really good minimum player? Like, how much would you pay for, like, you know, Jeff Green when he was a minimum band bouncing around yeah, on the yeah. Cavs and stuff? Um, who, yeah, who do I you think, think they... we're going to find out. I think if I'm looking at this list, the list you, you know, the people, the names you listed, excuse me, I think they won the one they stand to gain the most from getting is probably Finney Smith. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think, and just because he's the best player there, right? He's the best player mm. that you listed, and if they can get mm. him, they get a six. What is he? Six nine. Yeah, like who's the backup forward right now? Well, yeah, but then he like imagine him in a. In a small five man lineup, he'd be elite. He'd be so yeah, elite. yeah, yeah. Next to Aiden Brown, Drew Porzingis, like that five. The five's mm, crazy. Mm. And I, I was thinking of like, you know, could they upgrade the backup five spot? Because like watching them against the Pacers the other day, it's like, man, this is a lot of Luke Cornett. And did you know that even though he's not like guarding the man behind three point one, he'll still jump up just to block their view. But um. It's like, oh man, a lot of Luke Cornett, but I guess when Pozingas comes back, there's no Luke Cornett. So like don't we I think if recent history of the NBA says anything, don't throw assets at a backup center because it just doesn't matter. Like Denver gave four second round picks for Joel McGee and then he just didn't touch the court in the playoffs because in the eight minutes that Jokic isn't on the court, just put a four at the five and just hope to outrun the other team. Yeah, but like Andre Drummond's pretty rough. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's there's better ones, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I guess they can take JaVel McGee off us if they if they really are so desperate. Kind of crazy he's still in the league. He's doing fine. <laughs> he actually you, like... is. It's so <laughs> Like, when um, he went to the Warriors, there you go. <laughs> when he went to the Warriors, it was like, oh, this is his last chance, you know, like... Um, can he can he do it? And then he went to the Lakers, and he was like, yeah, you know, played quite a big role for their title team. And then he bounced around a little bit, and like he's still he's still going. Yeah, and I I'll argue relevance for that mention of the Warriors as well, Sean. I think you're actually doing a really good job here. <laughs> um, Thanks, man. I'll, you know, can you you sort of like ha ha it when you mentioned it, but does Shams only work for FanDuel TV, or are they like a subsidiary of the? Place that he works for. I don't know, man, because the um he's also sometimes when I see the news is by him, I will just write it from the athletic because like that's where he writes. Um, all right, send your lead NBA inside of the athletic and stadium. Stadium's his company that got bought out by the athletic when they signed him from Yahoo Sports, I think. Or well, yeah, who cares what it was? Um, and then second sentence: a FanDuel partner and co-host of Run It Back on FanDuel TV. So he works for multiple places. Yeah, that's. So I wonder why he would drop. I mean, I guess he saves his bad news, but his shitty news for FanDuel TV instead of the Athletic. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Um, all right, final piece of news. Um, Terrence Ross has announced his retirement. Uh, this is coming from the T. Ross podcast. Um, yeah, any any thoughts on, on Terrence Ross retiring? Yeah, well said. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's perfect. Um, I guess that's one of the benefits of getting your own podcast. You can announce your own retirement. 
Otherwise, you just sort of disappear like Trevor Ariza. He, he didn't get signed. I don't even know if he was trying to get signed. And then he waited 20 games into the season and be like, you know what, everyone, I'm out. I thought he retired last cool. season. I thought he was already done. Like, why is this even here? Yeah, well, probably probably career highlight for me was when um, it was just before the trade deadline. We were in your retreat upstairs, um, and we it was just before the trade deadline, and we said, oh, what's one move that we want to see every single team make? And this was two seasons ago. What's one move that we want to see every team make? And I was like, oh, I really want the Denver Nuggets to trade, like, you know, Gary Harris for Terrence Ross, right? And, I was, and then Lukey just looked at me and was like, what the fuck's wrong with you, man? Can't you just say, like, a superstar trade like the rest of us? Yeah. Um, think, but it was even yeah, that was... not even a season ago when he was sitting on the Phoenix Suns bench and we were discussing... God, it was actually... It could have been even more recent than that. Um, and I was like, why aren't they playing Terrence Ross? He could actually be the solution to some of their problems. Mm-hmm. That was recent. I don't know if you remember that one. I think it was also a retreat podcast. It was last year. Yeah. He played for the Phoenix Suns after getting a buyout from the Orlando Magic. It was the it was the it was the Durant it was the first iteration of the Durant Booker team. So yeah, halfway through, they, halfway they, through they last year. Feel, mm, they were having offensive they feel the space. Yeah. Yeah. Um and we were like, why don't they just play Terrence Ross? He's like literally sitting there doing nothing. Yeah, and it's probably yeah, who knows? Who cares? I mean that's that's a high note to finish the pod, isn't it? Great. Um, Alice, thanks for coming on. Next time we chat, it'll be in person. I'm sure we'll make dinner before we do it. Um but uh I don't know, anything you want to finish on? No, pleasure as always. Uh do is there a website that we can see some recent articles? Yeah, yeah. Do? Yeah, it's it's quite simple actually. It's just the day two dot com. Um, and from there you can find all it's that easy, it's that easy. Yes. And from there you can find all their socials. Uh and sign up to the newsletter. I mean, no one's listening to the post roll, so Well, I'm listening, Sean. Uh I guess you are because you put this on a sleep time before you go to bed, don't you? Hey, you I hope you feel heard. <laughs> all right. Uh I'll have to speak to you next time. Bye, Shawnee. You want to talk WNBA? Maybe some WNBL? Australian Opals chat? Heck, even dabble in some EuroLeague? Find the W Basketball Show on the Deep 2 Podcast Network.